everyone, I'm Zufar Bigbov at Russera Studio in Watertown, Connecticut, and today we are broadcasting next webinar of series of oil paintings. And today's subject, I believe, was uh, many people have been waiting for. It's a nocturne. Last time we painted nocturne was a year ago, uh, and that was a view of town in northern Holland, which we call now Netherlands. And one of those provinces out there with the nice uh, walls and uh, water view. No water view today. And it's an American town called Easton, which is known for Easton Plein Air. Uh, this photograph and painting was done in 2017. And it's going to be pretty a long demo. Uh, you're going to see about two hours demo during this live webinar. And right after it's over, I would say around 9 p.m., you'll be able to see continuation. For those who don't want, to, want to do everything at once, they keep, can keep watching it and painting maybe along. Uh, and if you want to do that the next day, so it's uh, already there. It's just hiding now as unlisted. And then at 9 p.m., it will be available for people to see it. It will be what's called public on YouTube. So uh, I'm glad you are here with me. Uh, post your questions under video. Uh, it's a long video. I'm not going to talk a lot, but uh, in the break in between the first hour and second hour, we're going to stop for to refresh our minds, to have some cup of tea, glass of wine, whatever you prefer, and I will be answering your questions. Last time it was pretty nice discussion, so be proactive, and I will be waiting for your uh, questions uh, because I want you to help you with your struggles and each of us have difficulties. Again, this is a free webinar. It's available for everyone, at least at this moment. It's not going to be on YouTube forever. Please watch it, share with your friends. And if you are a subscriber to webinars, and a link is also in description, so you're receiving in advance at least a few hours or a day before um, a reference image and what materials I'm using, which are pretty much uh, the same, but with some little uh, differences. And I'm not saying about that much during the uh, webinar itself because we need to save time. Thank you for those who support uh, these videos, uh, leaving some tips in tip jar, uh, and that's also in description. Shall we start? Let's go. Okay, I guess we can start. Nocturnes are definitely a different type of paintings compared to our traditional day light day painting because the value is different, direction of shadows is different, and even uh, the sources of light is different. We always have during the day sky as a source of light and stronger on sunny days, stronger and warmer uh, source of light, which is uh, the sun. And here we have what do we have? We have here uh, one street light. We have some, uh, there is front of the uh, that theater also gives a shade, some cool light on that, uh, on those buildings, the whole street. We have here also traffic lights, which uh, sometimes turned with its back to us and uh, they shade light as well. So uh, there are many of them and they're not always the same uh, in temperature. Some of them are warmer, some of them are cooler. Sometimes on traffic light, we have green light, then we have red light and yellows. So um, it's easy to get confused, but it's create uh, that uh, specific uh, feeling of the, of the night, okay? And um, especially if we talk about the town uh, views, townscapes, if it was, uh, let's say, moonlight, then we have only moon and sky doesn't sh shed any light on earth unless it's just soon after uh, the sunset. So you can have a purple sky over you or greenish sky over you or uh, very well lit pinkish or orange uh, cloud over you. And uh, then we have that complexity of the color. As we are painters, we want to look for complexity of color presented uh, accurately. So we create feeling of the immersing into reality deeper than Photograph and regular printing can do because we can uh, enhance reflexes. We can make uh, shadows more colorful as the human eye sees rather than camera sees them black, etc. Even with sky. So uh, as you remember, so if we go uh, to my reference, 
yes, I'm saying about this photograph, uh, you can see that uh, it was taken earlier than at that time I was not planning to do a webinar uh, based on this view. I didn't know how it will come out, etc. Now I'm more uh, better prepared every time I take a picture. I take uh, several um, references and um, I always think that I can uh, teach that. Again, this was done in 2017. Camera at that time, uh, iPhone at least, what I was using most of the time with me was not that, uh, had very great sensitivity. Uh, but, and uh, you could see that the sky is lighter. Um, again, it's not accurate value. It probably was uh, slightly darker or lighter because camera doesn't really know exactly uh, how uh, our eye, human eye sees that. So I like the moment when it's slightly darker sky and there is still some blue or green or uh, but not that like pitch black, uh, like purplish uh, sky. When um, the sky is still lit, uh, there is better um, temperature shifts in shadows. And as you see here, we have a, <laughs> a green light, uh, the traffic light. When it's switched to red, it uh, changes uh, our shadows uh, from uh, this traffic, uh, from this uh, street light. Again, it's too much to talk. We're here to practice. If we need to have a theory, we're taking classes. And uh, definitely here um, in uh, views of towns, when we have architecture, we need to know uh, rules of perspective. It takes hours and sometimes it, uh, to teach and it takes days, weeks, and sometimes years to learn how these things work. It's out of scope of our uh, teaching and I hope you had a chance if you are subscribers you received this reference in advance you had a chance to sketch it and put it uh, here as it's now if you're watching this as a recording you can stop here uh, sketch on paper then uh, draw on your canvas and this canvas was toned with um, burnt umber uh, the acrylic layer with um, like a gesso a transparent gesso like uh, acrylic liquid dried well uh, overnight and I'm painting it um, like over a dry surface and then uh, all drawing was applied with oil pastel I'm telling that for those who are watching it like accidentally found this video on YouTube and uh, uh, want to understand what's going on all right uh, under this video you'll find a prep um, a kind of video which explains uh, uh, what colors I have here on my palette and um, so what kind of what size of this canvas panel etc. So why I have it here uh, the question about medium is quite uh, common and I have here uh, put this gel out of tube and I use Galkit gel. I can work without gel uh, but a medium is, is important uh, when I paint outside specifically, I like a uh, liquid uh, medium for first layer. It dries relatively fast. When I'm in studio, I like it as well. Uh, but a gel uh, probably works uh, as great as a liquid medium. And what I have in my uh, palette cuff is a solution, which medium could also work well. When we're in studio, 50-50, Gamzol and Galgit light. Again, uh, watch that in prep video below if you are on YouTube and uh, in description. And uh, here I have my like cleaning solution, Terpenoid Natural. All right. Uh, again, palette is also explained in that video. And I'll be using out of all these blues, mainly ultramarine blue and um, cerulean blue. Um, all right. So... We have already a mid-tone canvas. We don't have whites, which we need to get rid of. And as you can see, we have lightest light here. Uh, where's these? And probably center of our composition is a top, which sheds light like onto surrounding the street light. Do I need to mark it as white? Uh, it would be probably not a bad idea. But on the other hand, uh, we are... Um, we need to paint it in multiple layers. So I rather do it this way. I'll take um, like smaller, like number two flat, and we'll do a like underpainting for the street light. So 
I'm taking a small amount of cadmium orange and this uh, studio great paints trying to make it more affordable for most of my students and I'm creating that underpainting just with cadmium orange and I do it first because I want that layer to dry uh, soon enough when I really uh, will come back to this area and apply more layers creating glow etc and also I have here a lot of mess from uh, drawing redrawing and that could happen with your oils if you are using oil paint and thin brush and we also in the middle let's speed up I think we can mark up center of our glow I'm not working with a pure white as you could see but uh, at least I we know where we have one of the uh, biggest source of light in our painting so what's next I think value of this house compared to reference is not um, is not ideal but it's fine Oh, you know what? So we need to decide, uh, especially due, during this period time of, of the day, are we painting this or later or later? And of course, since we are using um, this final painting as one of the references as well, um, I need to decide, do I really like this time of the night or want to change it? To make things simple, we, uh, I will paint it very close to what we have here. Uh, we see there is a blue in the sky uh, I wish it was a little bit more, but again, I was finishing this painting, um, as I mentioned in my prep video, uh, close to, I think, like, like 1.30 or 2 in the morning. So at midnight, it was dark enough when I think it was like mid-stage of this painting. So, and uh, if we look at the blurry version, we see colors better, we're getting less distracted, we see bigger shapes. So, uh, shall I start with sky? Why not? Um, on days we like uh, painting starting with a sky. Why? Because it's relatively flat, easy to cover, and if there are no any like bare trees, so it's quite easy to uh, handle. So I'll take a bigger brush, number four, and I will mix. And of course I'm not going just with the blue. We have already underpainting with a burnt umber i'll add small amount of burnt umber here just to desaturate that crazy blue color and um but it's important that we don't paint it black okay so um we well, can use still transparency of the paint At this layer if we consider going over this layer again yeah let's mix a bigger amount of paint otherwise all session will just will be mixing and mixing I want to show difference of value and color between this roof which is very complex kind of it's hard to understand you need to see it during the day to understand how this roof works if it looks too tricky so what's going on you always can just make it uh, the way it's more like easier to understand let's say we can change it to this uh, regular shape My brush is bristle, it's stiff, it lets me to apply paint on the first layer with not many, fast enough, let's put it this way. Here we have a tree, in fact we don't see that much on our reference but it's just like coming in 
and uh, you might see yeah you cannot see it much here because angle which I'm observing here uh, is not exactly the same angle as on my painting plus again uh, we're not painting copy of the photograph we're creating an image a story so we are if we're doing any alteration they still must look natural at the same time um, quite often changing angle removing object it's your way of talk telling that uh, story you can add people you, you can remove people you want to add a car and then you choose what kind of car you want because during the painting time there were probably like dozens of car passed if you want to put their ambulance it will be absolutely different story if you put their people walking and people standing if you want to put their people painting and you're telling the story so just adjacent next object here is burnt umber it's slightly darker i want sky to be lighter or definitely is different in different in color not just the value if you had a good drawing uh, usually uh, it saves you time of course if you accurately uh, apply your paints that precision of your brush strokes comes with experience if you paint every day or at least a few times a week feeling confidence will be quite uh, quite nice so why won't we go with the next a dark object and here um, have a tree and I decided not just to have a couple of like leaves sticking out from the side even this position of the tree is not ideal I want it to see to be a uh, warm gray but not even often I mean the the main rule you need to include like stem of the tree if possible into painting because uh, so it kind of gets perceived better so now what to do with the bottom part I cannot like have it as a slope here I need to do continuation of the shape so it looks uh, stable enough and uh, we don't see here on our reference what's happening there but definitely there is a, a side and uh, there is a wall and then further you have their shops since it's so peripheral I'm not be putting any um, any objects there just will make it dark for now I can put some suggestion of maybe a lights later but very mild the whole wall here actually uh, looks dark and the problem is here we have this street there's 90 degree between that street and this is 45 degree um, little kind of like a cut of the building and uh, where the entrance is so it's uh, interesting not very usual uh, architectural detail so only with a nice precision of following um, perspective lines which on my reference I think is not great it looks a little the angle doesn't look like 45 I think the uh, this part should go under kind of other angle and I'm going to correct that that's the tricky part and now we have feeling that it's not on the same plane and not on that plane which we have there okay let's switch back we have here a number of uh, 
have here a number of windows and question also what arise shall we do window in the in the beginning or shall we do it uh, later I think uh, painting windows over uh, the paint when it's when it's wet when it has uh, white is a difficult thing I'd rather may paint them now as a, like with a thin layer and then I would work with uh, around them shaping them and then within uh, window again with a more delicate brush a thicker paint application I can make it uh, darker or if there is any light I can um, add it there as well over a relatively dry or settled paint uh, but again uh, windows are distractions for us we need to work I think on another uh, darker sides of buildings in this case that will be this part of the building you could use cadmium red if you had I'm going to mix it when I'm there I use cadmium red but if I don't have that's fine with me and if you use cadmium red you just mix ultramarine blue with cadmium red and you get that darker like brick color brownish like terracotta color or English red so now you need to kind of understand what value uh, will be shift between your sky and this building so as on this reference you see uh, the wall of the house is dark but then during the night when the sky gets very dark and black you start to see uh, much more light on these walls so um, I mean color wise they are not even close so uh, even one thing is red another is a blue or, or purplish black so there will be definitely a color shift but I recommend you um, uh, in this case if we're having a little bit more of a sky blue like maybe in that area still create that contrast darker wall and a lighter uh, I mean a lighter wall and darker sky and uh, since it's a brick wall I'm already right from beginning trying to paint it not even because of bricks over time I mean first bricks are uh, not the same Okay. I'm not saying on top they're not the same but you know each brick has uh, a little bit different color because coming often from different batches and I did not paint uh, here my windows first because overall this uh, wall is dark and there is no like whites or opaque paint uh, then cadmiums just added is used I think I'll be able to paint windows with no problems but like on that area if I start painting it with whites that could be an issue I'm trying to close those gaps Maybe I should take a smaller brush even like a softer synthetic is fine it looks pretty dark uh, on a video could I start with blacks here uh, I, I could do that as well but I don't think uh, with a good drawing we have any uh, any problems if we did um, darks first or lights first uh, now let me make top of the building darker so as you see I changed direction of my brush strokes getting there more of a blue 
because for this area main light source is warm it's not time to work on details but let's kind of figure out and show gradient a little tricky because of we have different channels of paint with here and here and here let's start adding a little bit of opaque paint or we can scrape off excess of paint which we don't want there and for that we can use a stiffer brush this is in fact it's pretty stiff uh, it's synthetic but like a bristle type but deceivingly it's made of dark hair which you would assume that it should be softer synthetic so now uh, my lines can easily get hidden if I was not very accurate and we don't need to be super accurate so we'll definitely we'll need to dedicate some time to do some correction all right that's uh, good enough again if you want to go thinner sorry stone brush and just work more with feeling and effect of transparency that's absolutely fine all right so uh, this house looks dark enough and again it could be temporal effect because this area definitely will look lighter once we apply these uh, browns and purples around so why won't I do uh, that so overall the shape of this uh, brick exposed wall is uh, pretty complex we have many many things to uh, dance around still will use my large brush but I think soon I will need to switch to smaller one You know, uh, sometimes in uh, paintings, when lines are not straight, but have a small kind of curves and deviation, at times they look natural, at times they don't. So I guess that depends, is that area where it's appropriate to have them. And overall, the style of the painting also can give an idea is it was like, in, intentional or it was uh, overlooked by an artist and it looks like weakness and mistake so here we have some sort of as I remember that was at that time called Benning's restaurant um, it has some not the wall I think some sort of a curtain and I'm glad because here I'm glad that we have separation of the windows from the edge it's just it's not a big issue but it looks better this way so this wall uh, overall now can be not exactly completed but the red part brick part exposure exposed parts I can almost complete uh, these windows have been pretty large I want to just separate windows from flowers those shrubs at the bottom and I know that the Avalon this is a sort of kind of like there is a balcony on top of it you know the Avalon is a building which now um, belongs to its historical building which belongs to Avalon Foundation and uh, public of Eastern, uh, not Eastern only, but from around who are supporters and probably donors even from outside of that county uh, wish to that building not to be not to be uh, remodeled by the uh, owner because sitting right in the center of Easton. And when the situation came that the theater probably had to move, supporters in fact uh, stepped in with of course uh, and, and and helped Avalon to buy this building so they donated hundreds of thousand dollars and now building is preserved as is and uh, it was sold by owner to Avalon Foundation and theater now has its own building that's a great story 
how community can help arts not only arts they are not they are making doing a lot of events outside of plein air eastern they do a lot of good things for town and community really is I was very thankful for what they're doing and uh, donated a lot of money so windows are still looking light and uh, I don't think with a brush of this size uh, I will be able to proceed I don't have bristles of size 2 so I'll go with a synthetic of size 2 and that's a pretty stiff one I think I'll be good I'll be alright I work on windows but again between windows and I mean the, the dark parts of windows this looks green because of the oil pastel I was using was green and I really like it for the night scene so between windows glass which in this case the building has no light inside those rooms behind this glass which is dark and brick wall there is uh, some white trimming I don't usually paint a uh, building like windows blue I do them warm especially with my first layer like brownish and then if there is any sky gets reflected then I add blue but overall it's a deep shadow and deep shadows are we primarily consider them to be warm so like brown works well it's like we lost those windows not a problem at all We'll need to do some correction of drawing, re, reworking, re uh, measuring, and not losing perspective uh, accurateness. I mean, perspective wise, this line should be accurate. If we're losing their right direction, then painting may look a little odd. that uh, sign it's uh, it was glossy black with some golden letters which I did not really want to paint but I want to create an even presentation dark enough then I'll do trimming around it so now this may look strange I think I'm pretty good here with a size 2 brush and I need to paint those shrubs which are partially lit partially have a shadow side they have flowers so that's not easy so let's do shadow side first you can even then paint if there is any cast shadow no I don't see much on my reference any cast shadow here but for your better understanding what I'm working with I will open up sharp image to remember what's that white thing I'm going around right now and if you look at this reference yeah you can see here there is looks like some stairs coming down as well so when we do uh, shrubs and trees try to introduce a couple of colors cooler ones cooler greens and warmer greens doesn't matter day or night what we're painting I'm not going to do those <clears throat> rails or something let me make it solid simplified and also as you could see on our reference we have here back of the car uh, because I didn't want to have here just strong rectangle and it kind of like emerges with a shape of the of the shrubs you cannot say does it make it better or worse it doesn't look like a mistake for me it looks uh, good enough and uh, black car at night looks pretty 
uh, or kind of like a natural kind of so with all these straight lines rectangles it's nice to have something which is not that kind of a stiff in shape and car nice cars not the USPS um, truck has nice curves and somewhere sometimes a USPS truck could be a nice subject to paint as well when you have trees around so now it's sitting like a little shed a little shack on the street you have perspective lines and everything observed and then uh, there are like amorphous shapes around it like trees and whatever maybe rocks etc shrubs looks like next step which we could do were those windows and doing this uh, awning over three windows like um and but you know without any white uh, i still want to create that texture feeling you could see that uh, that that was a brick wall actually it was probably made of red brick initially and then was painted with a kind of grayish paint like pretty light and on and warm that's how it looks in reality again if you were on site you could come closer and right now um, what i'm trying to do is i will try to uh, change value uh, make the top as we see on this reference uh, darker uh, but again n in values i just uh, it will be lighter in the sky but i want to create that um, feeling that it's a brick wall not evenly uh, lit as we can see on our reference and so we'll try you know painting i uh, i'm trying to paint it for you so you could see my thinking process and i haven't been painting this view a long time ago like what six years ago i painted that i don't remember all details So this way uh, I can make it slightly darker and my green oil pastel actually helps me a lot adding extra chroma, extra color there. Okay, it looks like the bottom is darker now. We'll correct that. Let me go over entire wall here. Why it's lighter just because there are less details, less of oil pastel was used. And here we have a very complex combination of owning and um, some. There is on on the street light. There is a poster sitting. I don't want to leave those spaces as light as they are and that's fine if I have it dark enough here no problem at all because of because it looks darker now because we still have a lot of not white but still uh, light enough uh, canvas so now I'll make top slightly darker And in my mix, I'm not using just like traditional gray paint, which would mix with blue and brown. I, I can use that part. I can use small amount of purple if I want. And also I like using for the night scenes, mix of cooler greens and cooler reds. like a lizard permanent small amount and let's say viridian green so i made this part darker it looks good then i'll do windows and then i'll paint uh, walls again with more opaque paint which i mentioned in the beginning so now this side this side gets traffic i think some light from some of the traffic light it looks warm and definitely we think about values 
at this time, right? Not much of the exact color, but of values. Try not to destroy my drawing totally because I need it. At least somewhere preserved. So then restoring it will take less efforts and most importantly less time. You know what's good about painting during the night if you're not painting specific light effects in the sky, like specific cloud which you see at that moment. You can paint long enough, all night long, and light will be the same. Questions are just safety. And second thing is, um, of course, you're getting more tired when you paint during the night. Your eyes getting more tired. You look from better lit canvas to a less lit landscape. That adds up and usually after a couple of hours of painting outside you already may feel and it's time feel that you want to go to bed it's not the normal usually it's not normal time of the day we should be awake especially when we talk about painting all after midnight all right so that looks better looks like ghost <laughs> ghost uh, looks like halloween painting not ghost but the, that feeling ghost town ghost city and sometimes you can add those imperfections even at this stage because some of them you will cover some of them you will not okay and I think in pretty close to this um, color and values is a street you know of course I'm not going to do this street <laughs> Uh, signs there so I have less space here it looks greenish uh, but again it's not that time of the day I'll, and it's greenish because of this uh, street light which is green sheds and I think it mixes with some yellows so it's a warm green I'd rather do what I have in here so I'll use my whatever mix fusion of all paints together and since we do not see much of other light sources around let's focus on th that scene and we'll kind of make foreground slightly darker and getting overall pavement lighter towards those light sources which we have in our in our scene if you feel that this is a little too dark then I want it then you then what you want we are still doing first layer you can always wipe off even with your brush you would make it wipe it the paint from brush and then and then with brush wipe it off from your canvas your brush strokes already could be directional so kind of like going along the road right that's better so what we got here on the left side so we have here some sidewalk and a sidewalk could be also we don't want to leave it that light there will be some light from these windows but it's obstructed by these shrubs and this uh, sidewalk may have lighter color because of concrete which is of course very typical or or it can be uh, darker because just different kind of stones is used there. And plus, this area is right under our uh, street light. We didn't actually finish uh, this part because we have here flowers. Okay, so uh, these windows 
here, most of them are dark enough, are not there. And there's a poster on this street. And there is also this yellow is the back of a street light. And you see that red, actually, um, kind of a little glow is trying to place. Have this awning. And I don't really remember what we got here. Let's see. What I think we see there is the uh, end of the uh, building and there is a uh, maybe alley goes through. I did not really want to include flag, which is kind of all chopped off by this poster and this post, everything. So I, yes, that will be whatever something there, like sh on, uh, it's very hard to understand shape, etc. So we're getting rid of it in this situation. I'd love to paint flag when it's open, when you can see it, or yes, uh, but not the way as it's obstructed. I am taking again my uh, smaller brush, flat, and it's soft actually, and I'll create some darker mixes, mainly warm, like brownish. And there is uh, awning specifically, it's a black and it's lit. Again, let's go back here and you see I made it warm and it looks perfectly well. It's kind of like even, it looks like even like some orange was added into this dark mix, making it a lighter and nicer dark shape. More interesting, exciting. Right, that's good. Make sure you create, you keep that angle going down. That's the lens perspective because this edge is closer to us than that one. Okay, so it goes towards vanishing point. So let's do this uh, poster, which I think initially was black and it's sitting somehow in shadow, just top of that poster. Now that pole is visible. And you don't have to go with the same mix. Make different mix. I don't know, add some whatever uh, magenta. And again, this is not a window window is a deep shadow this doesn't have a deep shadow it's not sitting deep it's basically catch um, this poster catch a lot of color a lot of light from different light objects same thing with this post i will definitely will show it now here down to the bottom there it has pretty wide foundation And the bottom of this uh, street light, I think Galkit gel works pretty well. Again, we're in studio, paint doesn't dry that fast as it could do outside. Let's look at the reference image. We can get here details. That's often why we need this reference images for. There are actually two posts. I do not know have I painted two of them or not. Let's do two. Let's do historically be more accurate. But in this darkness among all these shapes, if you paint it to one instead of two, it's not going to be uh, kind of like strikingly untrue. <laughs> So here we have, I think, post for camera as well. And then we have this street light. Okay, and it's yellow. So now we do pretty delicate uh, work. And here we see less and less part of that car. We have here some garbage bin. 
and artists are standing next to it <laughs> painting definitely you need some garbage bin for use paper towels I think it's time for windows more of a brown <clears throat> brown and even though we have their light this middle one has a darker area so here we need to be more accurate because if you did windows right in the beginning that will be helping you if you did not you will need to correct that that stays in your mind You know, um, there are crossbars here, and I like when the top of the window is slightly darker than the lower parts where you have those objects and whatever that they're selling better lit. I think for me it looks more natural. If you want, you can actually, these well lit areas make them add, introduce that color which you want agenda or orange go thin because definitely you will need to have a more of a paint application so let's clean the brush go thin look back to our painting as a reference it's hard to recognize exactly all shapes within those windows we're kind of creating some sort of beautiful lit mess which is um, sitting inside of rectangle and why not uh, let's work on this part of the um, of the or on this building it has also it has some uh, blinds or some curtains sure if this uh, windows extends a little further I think they do and gap in between these windows is uh, bigger we cannot yes we see that mm -hmm. so let's move these windows a little bit more Them a little bit apart. You want to paint work on gap. Let's make that gap darker and wider. Not very dark, but darker than the windows which are lit from inside. All right, so this building now looks more solid. Um, the whole building and windows here are our little problem once we finish them uh, we can look at our painting as a whole that's the traffic light even though it will be very well lit I can make it start with a yellow ochre so now now let's look at our windows in sharper image it's the first layer for windows again if you feel unsteady I mean your hand use supporter mall stick or just other brush if it's long enough or ruler 
try to observe these angles of the top specific I mean the vertical lines are easy right but the top and bottom of these windows they uh, need to be painted in accordance with vanishing points maybe it's not critical the most critical point you need to have them at the end to be accurate but I want you to nourish that feeling how they should be and your brain will remember it this is door if it's just plain black at least that time it used to be and uh, these windows on second and third floor let's say slightly darker so you kind of have should have feeling all uh, on which line they're sitting their bottoms and their tops at times I go with almost like a dr not very dry brush but it's not loaded with paint. It has uh, just right amount of medium. Amount of paint. And it feels almost like a dry brush. Sometimes you also you can do something like a scraping over it you know some sort of kind of like creating that something it's a, it's a glass and it has also those bars crossbars but you need to create that feeling that it's it's a, it's a glass so it catches some little highlights and other objects you can at this point again uh, check levels for windows you need to be sure that your top of one window and another window when they are kind of sitting next to each other I mean on the same line you know from the bottom of the building or the horizontal line to the bottom of the window is the same direction which means this this is horizontal line and it's running towards vanishing point down also let's say looks like this window turned to be slightly away All right you may want to I may want to move it here inside I don't have to scrape off that part immediately if it wasn't that much paint I can paint over it even mark for yourself some sort of line like this so we have glow here we have flame actually not the glow right <laughs> so let's work around it so this part part of another building don't remember exactly what we got here sometimes I just go with the abstract maybe there was a window but I'm going to make have like something like soft edges it's hard to say what's that but it should work well with the rest of the composition so here another building this is this building and to go from orange Especially if this is not the orange of cooler shade but kind of like a yellowish we often need to uh, do transition uh, through reds I'm not a big fan of applying too much of the uh, like cadmium reds around or too much of the alizarin because I don't want to glow to be darker than the uh, sky itself so I'll take this alizarin let's call it alizarin add some cadmium orange to it get something like this 
but use a small amount of it and try to see how it looks when you get mixed. And my sky is already kind of dry enough, which is nice. I'll try to uh, move now. towards the center of the glow, cleaning my brush often. Now I'm adding slightly more of orange. And since this paint is wet, we're having some of that gradient from reddish shade towards kind of like warmer shade. So now we have that gradient, looks great, right? It goes like through purple. Before we finish uh, kind of this stage, which is not block in, but like under painting rather, because we have a lot of uh, thin layers and it looks like watercolor for me. Uh, I need to make final decision about the sky. So in our reference painting, not the photograph, I like how it's dark around uh, this street light. On the other hand, um, I want the sky to be slightly having some light. And I know east, like in this situation, is that way. So it should be slightly lighter sky that way. We have a little, uh, I'll give you a tip. You can create a darker cloud where you want that dark to be. Let's say here. And then I'll open up behind that cloud some sky and have whatever color you want. Of course, that will be a little bit greenish shade or Just blue. I'm not going now with my bristle. I need to be more gentle with that layer, which is kind of not uh, absolutely ready to apply next layer. It's, uh, it's settled, but it's like a scab, uh, which is healing. Oops, too much. easily can be removed if I apply too much pressure. Yeah, I cannot uh, achieve that uh, thickness of paint again because this paint is not uh, dry enough. You can play a little bit more with the gradient if you want. And um, if you feel that you're moving your paint towards the zone where it's not supposed to be, just wipe your brush more often. I'm not going with a dark purple to this area because behind uh, like this part is a light enough building. It's not the dark blue sky. So it will be different colors. His gradients going through. Okay, definitely we have here like a torch. And uh, er like around, we don't see that much of a corresponding um, colors, like how very warm. Generally, our uh, light street light will be much lighter as, as on this painting. Uh, since there is really nothing which can obstruct, uh, I mean, I should, need, I should deal with, like because of trees or something, I can put that light, almost white, spot right now. Don't forget about small amount of yellow or at least uh, orange, tiny amount. It will be white, like 99.9%, .9%, but it should be a small amount of other paint in it. And if you 
want to create LED cool light for some reason you can add some uh, pigments which are also has uh, that cooler shade I would say something like with, which can take tiny tiny amount of tailo blue or tailo green would work well to create LED light uh, color cool one now let's do a break and then uh, come back and do a uh, checking our lines and drawing and let our, our brain to rest a little bit before next stage. So first part is over and you could see that this video is uh, slowly paced, a little uh, tight I would say. I'm not very vigorous, not applying vigorous brush strokes here and uh, get ready for another uh, hour today and you can watch another uh, over two and a half hours after that. So it's not going to be broadcasted again next week. It will be broadcasted. Uh, I mean, it's already recorded and it's already on YouTube. It says a part two. You can watch it today, which we are unlikely to have four and a half uh, hour session or to watch it other day. It's up to you. I checked. I don't see uh, questions. Oh, the Richard is here. Zufar would say uh, your first pass is at covering canvas, mid value, dark and lights. Yes, uh, again, the structure is pretty much the same. Of course, every painting has dictates, uh, depending on like is a studio or outside, what medium we have, what uh, subjects we have. Let's say if the clouds are passing, they're beautiful wood clouds immediately because of uh, then we need to paint them from memory. Uh, but in this case, it's studio painting. We can uh, strategically decide what we want. And again, it's a new view. I was really solving for myself how to paint it and uh, I was not really feeling great uh, yesterday when I was recording this and uh, didn't have a good sleep night before. So it's a kind of my, uh, I'm showing you my thinking process. Some people will hate it, some people will like it. Yes, the first layer usually um, is uh, not mid-tone. We do, start usually with the lights and then we go to mid-tone then we go to darks uh, that really uh, for the first layer thin paint application uh, medium based I mean uh, mixing with the medium heavily that medium which uh, fastens uh, I mean to make um, drying time shorter so we can paint on top of that outside it works perfectly well if it's not nocturne, it's day painting. We use a lot of bright, uh, intense colors on greens and flowers, etc. the sky. And we often uh, paint on white canvas and that works fine, uh, especially outside. Uh, I'm painting on toned canvas. And as you've seen, this canvas already was uh, kind of down in value. So I didn't have to uh, try to get rid of white canvas and but what I could do, I could uh, apply, let's say, my drawing for this relatively dark painting, not with oil pastel, but let's say with a thin acrylic paint or uh, Leviton, he was using even ink uh, and then he was painting on top of that. That was working well for uh, studies. So the drawing doesn't disappear under uh, top layers. And here I started, let's say, doing this wall on the left side and then uh, leaving those windows uh, left. I could really make the whole uh, wall kind of dark brown on the left, uh, that uh, building with a triangular uh, second, actually third floor to make it um, kind of like the whole the value. But I was afraid that the awning will disappear. So <clears throat> we're doing as we're doing and in classes I will... Um, Kind of consider uh, how kind of like could be done better because I'm re-watching my uh, webinars again and again uh, when I'm driving I'm basically not watching them I'm listening and I'm thinking how things could be done better because one of the uh, difficulties of painting if you're trying to achieve nice drawing and good values or accurate colors with values uh, 
so we it's many things to worry about and the painting turns to be a very uh, slow and long painting session no it's i'm not saying that every painting needs to be done in like in an hour or two but outside it would be nice to consider finishing painting within a couple of hours if the format is not large especially like this uh, like 12 by 9 or 9 by 12 or 8 by 10 so uh, it's uh, like get fit to a quick draw and um, so this one it feels long and uh, but it, it goes and explain uh, all consideration of colors values comparison because of it's not like a printing you cannot start with the uh, top and then finish with the bottom so we did with this shape and the perception of another shape changes or this shape when it's surrounded just with unpainted ca unpainted canvas it looks dark then you see like half an hour later when that mass on the right placed when this road is done sky is done it looks absolutely different in value and then also what's important with the first layer i've been repeating that again and again but it's a very very ex important foundational thing uh, first layer do doesn't just go uh, kind of like with thin a layer application it's also uh, we should not really much consider uh, like accurate color all those vibrances we're kind of taking trying to do general color and more focusing on values let's say the brick wall so a little bit of yellow maybe where the light is there or more of orange and then more of a blue like desaturated like shade areas uh, with that white house so we just give it a value and i was trying not to lose a drawing of my uh, windows and then the sky is a flat and then later um, after a kind of about finishing there is no even like a special point like we're done with the first layer so but we're finishing first layer all areas are covered with paint and we've been finishing usually with the darker areas on general average painting then we start thinking to go in dark areas thicker uh, and then uh, moving towards lighter areas and depending on again on the element maybe we can do some details earlier uh, some details could be left for later and some details uh, could be left even uh, for the next approach when uh, the whole painting is dry kind of maybe somewhere some glazing or some lines some posts etc so i don't see any other questions thank you uh, richard for your question and i think we are ready to move forward and uh, i hope our internet and everything will be as great as it was uh, during uh, part one ready so let's go to details to uh, go over each painting in parts and uh, all like all together like uh, looking at, at it in general and uh, work uh, and plan uh, further steps of my painting I can go with uh, any dark mix I want to have it again this kind of purplish brown is dark enough I don't need a lot of paint but I need to have a round tip like a fine tip brush not the smallest one but still be able to create lines and um, I want to go right from the center and then um, like and then of course we'll start painting with a, a thicker paint application and we'll start with shadows as we usually do so I think this awning for me looks quite inaccurate now I can do some mistake because again I'm not looking at my painting perpendicularly and I hope you do so I cannot do that because of my camera is looking at it I'm trying to do my best so we don't create any problems with our perspective because many of these lines will be a correction of lost 
and accurate lines of line of perspective. You don't have to start with awning. If you had the problem like right in your main line here, like at this foundation of the building, it should go up here and go slightly down here up to this point. This, uh, moment, this uh, stage can take time. Again, don't apply too much paint. Those lines should be uh, barely visible. You have your trash can. Yeah, let's it this way vertical lines here it's pretty big it's pretty big um, window this window is on the same level this window very strange it goes up it's not that low and it's a little bit it's more narrow Sometimes adding something which doesn't exist like on the same level some architectural detail can help viewers to have less troubles looking at your painting again we can come back to our reference image we have one and even now you know this again crossbars they are dark like a Scandinavian style. You can paint them, at least show them where it's supposed to be. Vertical ones will paint vertical, even though they also have some space goes as a contraction like going up it will be a uh, kind of probably hidden part most part of it but what will be a left over there will definitely will help us this awning in fact goes this way exposing this part of the window so now um, let's check this line okay now uh, bottoms of this windows they should be on the same level and with a very uh, fine touch you can again connect them you can take pencil at this stage as well if you want to go with a ruler the paint is probably still wet will not allow you to go easily to put the ruler on top but if you are trying to finish it next day really wish to have your first layer to be dry enough that's absolutely fine we cannot see much uh, our these crossbars here okay <clears throat> it's a uh, arch here and arch here and there is a I see crossbar here was crossbar here another another you you can skip this stage you can just watch it if you want again if it's study you don't really need to but again if you want to work with more precision and details it could be something you may need to consider doing all right and what's happening with this now we can look at the roof because really nothing else is happening we can add this little detail here and So our roof comes like this and that chimney behind during the night it was not looking 
that dark because I believe it's uh, I don't remember is it painted white it just sits that in shade but against the uh, fading sky it looks almost black uh, here we have uh, part of the roof <clears throat> and uh, even now I can create here this architectural parts which can look lighter again you can go with the more general shapes and not to include that or or do them as I did in my painting I'm pretty happy how it looked so we have here also tiny edge which will catch more light as you can see here yes I think this uh, house is a kind of very important for the whole composition and for perceiving of perspective this window is the same in size and the same level as those which are on the left same proportions same crossbars and on in here is a kind of like a like umbrella shape different then we have hidden behind the post entrance door which I believe is just black and you see here in front of a tripod of an artist painting that night and then also a post with a traffic light and I think I'll include this traffic light maybe it's not that high traffic light like on level of awning and there another like a uh, <clears throat> uh, this is not for the cars this is for the walkers I think there's something else here something else here and then vanishing point for this sidewalk goes up there are a few uh, more windows there's another uh, post with a traffic light which we don't have in to include it's too uh, peripheral we can quite often I just do posts and uh, do some parts and kind of it's all start kind of disappearing and um, going like this and definitely there will be some windows corresponding to this one and some windows corresponding to these ones As you remember we have here edge of the tree and between this tree and this um, triangle there is a roof continuation again it could be too much details for you you don't really have to follow everything but architecture uh, quite often requires precision um, cannot see here I think on my reference you see I added because this kind of like sinks and nothing is happening and there is something which we cannot see on photograph I added it's not chimney I think that's the uh, top floor like um, room windows a few rooms I believe and even chimney top should have a 
accurately done line so it doesn't really feel that it's like it's falling to one side so this both sides should be balanced and if it's flat surface has here so it should also follow vanishing points direction vanishing point direction okay what else do we have here now let's go uh, to this area shall we have we finished oh, there is a sidewalk here why won't we kind of add its edge here and then this is where the crosswalk is happening yeah this stage will take time but again it will pay off you are doing it not for nothing if you want to be your architecture look um, right okay what's hiding here yes that was a door there's a flag which uh, we decided not to paint because it's obstructed too much and there is also a window which is now interferes with this post which so the window I'm trying to skip I'm not painting it also remember that this um, see this bar for this poster is also following the same direction as those uh, windows same sharing same vanishing point so um, here we moved slightly closer this post with a traffic light and traffic light also I moved it slightly closer should slightly be overlapping with that window and with that awning overlapping is good um, if it's not just barely touching but really overlaps um, good amount so our post for this one it should have also a foundation kind of got lost that's what I caught here as a possible uh, inconsistency and now our I think our car Maybe I don't need the car there. Do not know I included that because I think car's been walking, but overall it doesn't let try to put there some uh, some life. Uh, like not making it too too lonely, like ghost town. Right. So uh, now let's work on this building. We can start with the sidewalk because that should correspond with that one. The edge, edge of the sidewalk is pretty sharp and it's in shadow. Then we have a little ramp and then somewhere we can add more of orange if we feel that we need to have a slightly warmer side warmer line yes here we don't have a concrete we have I think bricks on the sidewalk okay then we have this shadow shadows because we have these flowers so there is really no much of a straight lines but overall yes this is a little basement walking I think and then there is a little bit of light and flowers flowers are pretty dark here and you see like in between windows we have flowers going up I want to create it as a one uh, big cascade or 
garland going like this all right and it's pretty dark here what you see on your um, screens but I'm trying to translate and explain what I'm doing here and now this awning direction is very important don't make it going down or curved it should start in a specific point and finish a specific point if it feels that it goes down or too much up so uh, that can spoil the whole impression and to duplicate accurate you can create another line above that's how owning here is made and then also you cannot see it much but maybe you can see that here this is also going towards vanishing point which ends up if the street was like a million kilometers that would be going that way there's a little curve you can make it try straight because sometimes curves do not help us um, but to be accurate I'm making it curved then we have nice sign of the restaurant which is not there anymore there's another restaurant now do I need these curves if I can handle them yes same vanishing point going down and same vanishing point for these uh, windows as well so it's not a bad idea if you want to do this uh, vanishing point directions with a pencil um, like at the beginning and maybe through painting process you can see them looking through your uh, at least during your first layer through your first layer uh, paint so it's going a little too steep and let's see exactly there are a few other stuff above which makes it too complex do I need that most likely no this part is supposed to be kind of like a lot in shadow you barely can see there because I think this architectural detail is uh, kind of like covering this feels too flat maybe we can add a little bit more of a maybe some crease here or molding don't have to be too descriptive but when it's too like when the situation is asking to add there some detail and you don't have to be 100% accurate uh, or it's too many details like with this flag I recommend you to go with your guts okay edge of the building yes oh we didn't take care of these uh, windows are them exactly under these larger ones not really the larger ones are kind of narrow and uh, tall these lower ones are wider definitely of course they will have still pre vertical Yes, uh, vertical lines. So now windows look better. So we definitely have here a very dark shadow. I'm not going with the black. I'm going with brown and purple and blue. Again, on your screen, it may look way too dark, but I'm just again translating what I have in there.
there is a light like we can see on the reference um, I can will create maybe a couple of those arches which deliver uh, the light okay top of our light here let's go with the warmer because we have a glow just going over that I don't I would not do any uh, if even if I could see there are any uh, elements I wouldn't go you can don't have to go just through orange ones you can go with green and then add orange or red to create a glow effect going over metal part top part of the uh, of your uh, street light so windows I didn't finish this windows right you barely can see here anything I can look back at my uh, paintings here now you can go with that plan and idea I think this trimming is kind of sitting inside of the uh, wall opening that is why we don't see it on its left side but we see a right side exposure pretty well same thing happens with the bottom quite often crossbar it could be in the middle I think overall here it's above again same level same vanishing point you don't really have to rush and paint immediately quite often you need to look carefully that all perspective lines uh, are going right direction and quite often we figure out later oh the roof is not going right way or windows level is not accurate it will be quite difficult to uh, correct later so you need to be at this point with the drawing part to be quite happy directions there is another line going here again horizontal following vanishing point direction I see some elements which I included in, in inside of these windows. I think there was a sound like hanging <coughs> signs which are in shade. And they're almost like at our eye level. Don't have to be the same on both windows, could be the same, could be different. Quite often it requires some play, but uh, if there is any I think those windows are just open but I mean there is there are no crossbars or something definitely inside of the house could be something all right uh let's take a quick break just like a, uh, take a, some breath and we spent almost half an hour to this refinement of drawing to help us to paint next stages uh, much faster so you could stop your video and then catch up later if you're watching it live and painting maybe you don't need to stop so I basically didn't take a, a break just looking at it and I don't see any any big mistakes I think I can proceed further and uh, now I would say the the whole the sharpness of all edges will be I need to be more accurate here like in our like focal point and then major lines uh, we already established them but overall the edges will be softer and softer to periphery like here will be short, softer edges here will be definitely softer edges and um, I will start from beginning and we have here I mean to the cent with the center and we have here pretty uh, like, like a strong contrast between all these uh, little kind of like uh, elements Okay, uh, we are uh, still kind of working on mid-sized shapes. We're not making the finest uh, 
elements, uh, finest um, kind of details. So, um, and I'm starting with the dark parts, which are in this case are, I mean, original, the local color is black, uh, but we'll create among blacks some colors, some areas which are lit by warm light, so they will look more brownish, and then some areas which lit or look like stay in cooler areas, and they will be more of purplish, and maybe even cool green. So we'll start with this awning, okay, and then I will kind of like, we'll try to work in this area like that, spirally. Definitely adding some cadmium orange to it, even though the paint already looks pretty cool, but it's transparent paint. And it's not a crime to leave it transparent, but it has too much texture. Right now, when we have everything kind of rough, it looks okay, but then later it will look something's wrong with this awning. It's it's a rag, not the uh, solid. Adding somewhere a little bit of green. So this is more solid. This is not perfectly solid, but it's more solid. I hope you can see what's happening here. It's definitely a quite dark element, but among darks, this is maybe one of the lighter ones. I can make the bottom of this awning a little bit lighter to have a better contrast with shadow side. Again, this paint is a studio grade. Kind of trying to explore it, neg negatives and which paints beginners can save and on which paints they should not save because it's doesn't worth that saving. So we have here this fine line have this dark areas we have let's work on this owning here which is the same level but it's not that well lit and it also creates a background for uh, that street light also let's uh, kind of work on this on windows they look fine, I think. Trash can, door. You know, since you see it's established shapes, I'm not really wondering as it should be a little bit moved or not. It's adding, uh, applying paint is quite getting easy. And within the window, which has outlines, it's easy to create those short, precise brush strokes. Looks like there is a little bit of light it gets reflected in glass of these windows, since they're made of different parts. So they have a slight shift of angle that quite often creates a little bit of green, creates that um, slight difference in what each of them is reflecting. If this window sits in a different direction, there is a building across, and so the glass of this window can uh, reflect some part of that building as well. All right, shall I work on the roof? Uh, why not? Just a little bit. This is relaxing part because it's a big um, part. Size two flat brush works perfectly well for that. And I, since it turned towards the sky, I can go even with a little bit of extra color. I'm adding green. And then towards the tree, I can go with a little bit more of a red, create small 
and alternation of colors. Oh yes, I had that uh, tiny element here, which I almost forgot. Barely could see, maybe I need to kind of scrape it with my oil pastel so we can see that. Okay, so and now let's move to the left and um, have green here and I don't have very little of green here, I have some flowers. So why won't I go with that on that black um, poster, add some green presence. Not sure can you see that but you can see on palette I'm grabbing that uh, green again during the class uh, online class uh, takes much more effort to do recording I'll try to do zoom in so you can see better what's happening um, But again, I'm trying to explain what I'm doing, so you can really, um, when you paint, you I don't think like every second you look at the screen. You just get guided during these webinars. So what's happening here? Um, our shadow is dark or warm or what? When we have a street lights, mostly our shadows are cool. And then deep shadow again turn uh, warm. I think we got already too much of dark here. That will be with the next pass. I'll go and kind of put light. I don't need to put more shadow there, right? Let's work on this awning. And this awning, let's look at this. Doesn't catch much of any light. But it's uh, turned towards the sky. Maybe I need to add maybe of some cerulean blue, which is more opaque. The sky again, as I think I'm not going to do it kind of a midnight sky. That will be sky, which is after sunset barely have any fading feeling of that it's fading you know pretty dark but still not totally uh, pitch black so what we do with that sign i uh, want to create a feeling of light on it so it will be not evenly lit uh, you know why uh, I did this? Um, I don't remember. You know, I think after 11 o'clock they turned off those lights on this uh, sign. So I kind of left it as is because I could not really uh, see that anymore uh, light distribution. And I was not looking at my reference photo, which I could. So I'll, I'll make it like this. There are some letters. And they're made with gold, written, have been written with gold. Through these windows on our reference photograph, you could see, we could see some sky, but sky in this case is still much darker than it was on the reference photograph so I'm not going to create that effect maybe just some suggestion that it's not only just brown there there is could be some blue and again uh, cooler darks with brownish warmer darks they work well when we have when they put those brush strokes next to each other not creating one even mix. All right, so tree, peripheral, dark. We still have a lot of dark mixes here 
almost indefinite and going with olive green and covering I think it's uh, olive green more appro uh, appropriate for lower part of this tree and top in this case should look a cooler I think the purple will work very well blues and cool reds I'm sure it looks pretty for you pretty black but if you mix it as I'm saying to you you will see color difference all right is it time now to work on more opaque paint yes I think we pretty well um, kind of broke apart all these shapes and uh, let me clean my brush I'm not going to remove this mix because of uh, you know there are many many colors which are like in gray and um, and I can use my mixes here to create new mixes and I think now it's time when we can start using raw sienna if needed this is awfully light <laughs> very likely but again on palette you cannot really evaluate how good is this not bad actually in values it's pretty accurate and I don't want to go with reddish on this building so our lines which we had here we can now you know this helping lines we can hide them and you don't have to start and paint it as if you were a construction painter you create, you put brush strokes, let's say, of a blue distributed. And then approach to these brush strokes later with, let's say, with a warmer mix. In between. This is a opaque paint you can go thin if you want and it still will look opaque you don't have to load with a paste but you can it's, it depends on what personality and style of painting you do but since this paint has some white pretty opaque we can leave some paint still visible between brush strokes it's a little too much of a not texture but not even again this is a brick building which was painted so you see now we have a gradient on the bottom the bottom you can go maybe with a sienna to make it warm you don't have to go with yellows and orange in this environment sienna looks pretty warm and vivid compared to a very almost a colorless grays now our windows may look way too dark and we can help it in just in a few moments don't get distracted too much by that so much to explain compared to our previous webinars this again uh, the previous one specifically this again goes quite slow Maybe we need to speed up and finish it as if we're like storm approaching less talk more of work because I explained so much already don't think there is uh, much need of going over and over I just rather paint more uh, having more webinars on nocturnes and I 
whatever is hard to get in practice with more practice you will get it So under owning, it's darker. What color to choose? Go with purplish. The night scenes purplish work most of the time pretty well. Clean my brush. much of a medium which makes it paint too thin we don't want it to be too thin if you think that this trash can is too much to go around to just get rid of it that's not a big loss on most of American streets there are no trash cans at least I'm not I quite often have a hard time finding where to put my garbage if I paint no trash cans so of course I'm taking it with me and if it's like heavily loaded with paint of course we can put it bring it to transfer station it's supposed to dump cadmiums or a lot of oil the trash can right feels like I already want to put some light into these windows again try not to destroy this um, lines levels Let's, let's add a little bit more of light on this awning. Don't want to have much texture, but the lack of texture is not good either. And top of this awning can be slightly lighter. It creates too much of like a sharp line. So now we have there a lot of moist surface so we can really blend with it our top layer Yes, again, this cadmium orange is not the best. Putting a little bit more of color in windows, even though it can be a reflection only. Oh, this is too late. And then we, once we paint those crossbars, 
it can make it it can make it uh, look usually the top windows they catch uh, light uh, catch lights from uh, the sky but in this case we have it's quite tall window just in front of the these windows I mean tall a tall building in front of those windows again I think we lost here level Getting too dark, closer to glow, it's not supposed to. All right. There are so many nuances which need to be refined constantly. So it makes painting process slightly, you know, slightly quite significantly uh, longer. If you want to consider all of them, a small amount of greens. Even it could be too much of just orange here to have some sort of balance. All right, a little too much texture there, at least with the contrast of the camera. That camera does again yeah, uh, on my painting. It's not that. Uh, rough okay that's better um, so now let's say uh, this part of the building right it's darker it looks like catching some red light from something across the street it's good to have some sort of, sort of like a base mix or several mixes, let's say blue. I may need some extra ultramarine blue soon. And then you grab it and mix it with your whites. If this happened like a mess, you don't know where to, you get your paint from, you can clean some parts of it. I think I'm getting close to that stage, to that point where I want to clean my palette more often. It looks like more more of a purplish. Let's get more of an orange. Feels better this way. Yes, we have here post right. Traffic light post. to make this part lighter or I can make this side darker which is I think is more it's easier and more appropriate I'm not going with thick paint application I need to be more accurate with my lines here you can destroy them and under owning should be slightly darker area I think right and what color should be if we have orange light reddish light shadows will be greenish not purplish if it's reddish shadows turn green and also we have here some some soft shadow so this part actually brings a lot of life to this part and to this uh, the whole area and the, uh, there is a highlighted trim 
from bottom somehow reaching that area makes it also look just beautiful. Shall I go with this brush? I think with flats I will be able to do so. Um, but it's a delicate area. And let me start with this part here and create. That's better. Right. I think we have also kind of bottom lit uh, this part with the roof trimming like overhang and usually on opposite side it's a wider exposed okay and this part it's way too light let's go with dollar color and this part's less visibility that looks better and also just in a few moments I'll clean my uh, palette <clears throat> get this part pretty vibrant not a vibrant, but I would say a uh, lighter in value. And this part. Pretty nice. I think we got too much of pink there, so we can kill it with green. Okay, and again, I think small brush will help me to create that tiny detail. I should not focus on details, but sometime you think like, if I don't do it now, I have a pretty good chance to forget about it. Um, but that's, if it's important part, important detail, and you can forget that, maybe you should do it now, as long as it doesn't interfere with your painting process. I hope you did enjoy these two hours of watching, learning some skills. Uh, was it best or not best? It's hard to say, but the subject is quite um, popular. Painting Nocturnes um, brought me a number of awards. I mentioned that before. And uh, last time I got awards for Nocturne, that was in Laguna Plein Air. Uh, just like in October 2023, I painted uh, people sitting at the a fireplace uh, or right on the beach on Crystal Cove, California, uh, storytelling, playing guitar, etc. Uh, that was amazing and I was so honored to receive the Word of Excellence which is uh, was received together with our My Peer Artist Recognition as Artist Choice Award. So two awards and uh, mainly for that nocturne. So Another two and a half hours video is following this one. You can write like after it's over, I will go to my channel, we'll make it available for everyone right on Zufar Big Buff uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to watch it today, it's fine. But if you're tired, it's 9 p.m. Eastern time, you're probably getting ready to go to bed. If you are on the West Coast, Maybe it's not too late at this moment, just 6 p.m. and you are full of energy to complete that painting. It's up to you. I tried it to make it more convenient uh, this time. Also, I want to uh, offer you more on uh, through membership uh, so I can really focus more on not first a time exploring scene, but really methodically explain you step by step what we have to do next, what we do after. That approach uh, requires much more time investment, not just like with this video, the one day of working on it. And uh, thanks again for support for those who understand uh, this work and for learning, um, whatever, say me thank you one or another way. But uh, if I will have a membership site, that will be uh, planning my video like precisely 
recording it maybe a few times and then uh, doing a voiceover, including some tables, whatever, some summaries and downloadable materials. It will be much more work, but that's my goal in the future. So more people could learn painting, enjoy uh, travels, uh, creative part of their nature and be happier with their life. I guess we're done for now. Uh, see you next week or in next video if you prefer to continue working on this nocturne.